to Power 10 Europe, Renewable Energy World Europe and Nuclear Power Europe, which is taking place in the beautiful Italian city of Milan. Welcome also to the first in a series of news reports, which will be released at the end of each day of the event. We will be covering the important news and happenings at this year's show. So please visit the website and screen below to view the video dailies. The keynote session kicked off this year's event and set its tone. Three industry leaders shared their vision and outlook for the power industry. I'm joined by Nigel Blackaby, Conference Director for Penwell's International Power Group. Nigel, what was the overriding theme of today's keynote session? And could you summarise the main points that were discussed? Well, I think uh, after, although we had three uh, in a very different keynote speakers, um, there, there was a great deal of unity really in what their message was. Uh, clearly, they're all striving towards um, driving for, for more renewable technology to come onto the grid. But you know, what it uh, what it's really means is that they're going to have to compensate for that with what they call flexible uh, generation technology. We also have to embrace the reality that the pace of change is going to pick up faster than we can imagine. We're going to need to be flexible to handle the change that is to come. We heard of the speakers also talk really quite a lot about the long-term nature of the investments that are going to be required. Our industry will also have to invest in new technologies to fulfill the European generation requirement beyond 2020. It was really quite interesting to hear what Mr Zampini said about nuclear energy here in Italy particularly. He talked about Fukushima being a real milestone in the, uh, the journey of the nuclear industry and that really there was likely to be something of a setback. But interestingly, more countries are proceeding with their nuclear programs than those who've gone into reverse. No doubt that Fukushima will represent a milestone in the energy sector. Some minds will change. Even if only a few countries will stop on the nuclear technology, as we saw in the slide before, there will be a slowdown in the construction of nuclear power plant for a few years. Thank you, Nigel. Now that the keynote session is over, let's go down to the exhibition floor and see what's happening down there. Unique principles are the fact that we use a twin screw expander as our power box. We have an induction generator and uh, the fact that we use low temperature waste heat for renewable power. In other news, GE, Siemens and Vasilla all held special functions today. Let's have a look. What we're announcing today is a first-of-a-kind breakthrough technology that combines natural gas, wind, and solar thermal energy all in one power plant producing 530 megawatts at 70% efficiency, a new industry standard. Our customer is Metcap, a Turkish developer, and our partners are Gamma, our EPC, eSolar, who's providing the solar thermal technology, uh, and of course General Electric Company with our uh, natural gas and wind technologies. Smart power generation is about fast responding to changes in the renewables. The book also takes away a lot of hypes, what some politicians are following. So it's, it's a kind of yeah, brain teaser to show that the world, there is a solution, but the world is not so simple that just one hype can solve it. Man Diesel and Turbo also launched a new two-stage turbocharged engine and introduced a new gas turbine family. The new two-stage turbocharged uh, 4860 diesel engine, uh, the new is uh, the two turbochargers in sequence and two turbochargers in sequence allows higher uh, pressures of combustion air before the cylinder. It uh, allows higher efficiencies of the engine, lower fuel oil consumptions, and higher power outputs. United Conveyor and Fiberline Composites both displayed innovative products. We are here introducing uh, the latest innovation that we have put in the market, uh, the so-called VAX, Vibratory Ash Extraction System. 
first of all, maybe the most striking is the fact that this is based on vibratory technology. We are the only company that can guarantee um, residual carbon content in ash. We pull through uh, fiberglass products, FRP um, sections. Generally, uh, the, the materials are used in uh, aggressive environments. Um, so cooling towers is the application that we are addressing here today. The durability of the material as a general is, is, uh, is, is one of the big drivers for, uh, for the product. As we come to the end of the first day of PowerGen Europe, Renewable Energy World Europe and Nuclear Power Europe, we look forward to the plenary panel discussion which takes place tomorrow afternoon. Once again, this will be hosted by international journalist and TV presenter Stephen Sacker. Stephen will be joined by a panel of key industry leaders who will debate the European power policy and ask whether the industry can rise to the challenge. If you can't attend in person, you can register to view its live webcast and participate in the discussion. Please visit the websites on the screen below to register. It's free. It's been a packed day in the conferences and on the exhibition floor, and tomorrow promises to be just as exciting. Don't forget to follow the PG11 Twitter hashtag for the latest from the floor. I'm Dr. Heather Johnston. Thank you for watching, and see you tomorrow. Thank you.